Let's see if everything's working. All right, some stuff's working, which is good. Whew, man. What a weird week. Super hammered from work and my husband not being home and having to do everything and handle everything. Super tired from my crazy, weird trip. Uh, and I've got a fucking super weird rash out of nowhere. Like, come on, life. Give me a break here. But we're back and I wanted to stream today because I'm in a little bit of a funk. A little bit of a, a little bit of a, a, a somber mood. So I wanted, wanted something to, um, something to have a little bit of fun, you know. Um, and uh, do something cool, you know. Um, so I, so I wanted to do. Maybe get me some, uh, give me a little bit of, a little bit of energy. A little bit of that excitement, you know. Have a little bit of fun streaming. It's my plan. Uh, what I'm doing on the thing right now, I had some liquid resin on my desk that I didn't know about, so I just cleaned it up. Speaking of liquid resin, man, I've been 3D printing lots of weird different things. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. So, move these guys out of the way. I 3D printed a whole bunch of stuff for a new Battletech terrain. Um, so we're going to work on making some big dockyards today. Really cool stuff in there. I got a couple robots in there. He's not for the dockyard terrain. I just thought he was really cool. Um, but these guys are. These guys are. We got some. Got a hermit crab. And I've got these little dockyard robots, which are pretty cool. Got a whole bunch of like big container boxes and this thing and all kinds of stuff. So it should be pretty fun. So we got that. If you'll excuse me for one second, I apparently have more liquid resin on my desk because I am apparently just super slob mode today. Let me clean this up a little. Um, so what all this liquid resin on my desk means is so when I 3D print things, um, since I only have this one hobby space, I do everything here. Um, the same place I play and stream and everything. Um, and it's not really a bad setup. Works really well. 3D printers right in front of the window. I don't really sit in here when it's running. Um, it's really nice. But when I break things off the build plate, I put them in um, uh, like a like a metal like cake pan. And eventually the cake pan just sort of wears out. Um, so the fact that there's was liquid resin here tells me that the cake pan, uh, I just got to replace it. And it's just a little, a little worn out. This isn't the end of the world. It cost me like $3. And it normally absorbs all any like drips and splashes and stuff like that. Um, but I guess she, uh, I guess she's a little beat. So I'll have to get a new one. All right, so besides the Battletech terrain, I also have some really cool stuff here. These are some minis that I printed for Silver Bayonet. We got some really cool werewolves. So first I printed these at their 100% scale, but their 100% scale is very small. <laughs> so then I upsize them and they're much, much nicer, much more intimidating. You can see the 100% scale there. Now 100% scale is about person sized, but you know, it's a werewolf. I want it to be fucking big, you know? And they're really cool. And then I printed out some guys for my uh, team. So these guys are printed out to be in scale with um, uh, what is the name of this game? Curse City Minis. So I can use the Curse City Minis too. Um, I will say I picked up these two. Uh, the Van Dents. Because they're just really cool models. But they're also really fucking small. They're about 20% out of scale with Curse City. 
like legitimately like <sighs> so look at the size of their feet right look at the width of their boots not the length of the boot the width of the boot and then look at the size of the head Gloria's head is like 20% bigger than this guy's head so he's an awesome mini but he's like a freaking like <sighs> he's not even like a really short man He's literally just like smaller scale. Um, so yeah, <sighs> not super happy about that. But I've got these really bitching guys. So you can see, I also originally printed these in two scales, um, and this was the original, and this was like one one twenty percent. Um, so one of the reasons I scaled them up, like this guy here. Who's got his cool uh, uh, bloodborne hat? And then there is uh, this guy who's like more of like a cowboy. Pretty cool. And then there is a there's a lady. I've got the small scale of the lady here. What happened to the big scale of the lady? Oh, maybe she didn't print. Maybe I threw her away. Weird. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's supposed to be a bigger scale of this lady who's really neat. She's like a gunslinger in a top hat. She's really cool, but I guess uh, I don't know what the hell I did with her. Um, hmm, okay. Well, I'll have to reprint her, I guess. <laughs> um, I also have a bunch of these musketeers. Like, literal musketeers. Not like, you know, the, the thing, the three of them. And they're pretty dope. Um, so the Musketeers came from a company called Highland Miniatures. Still have to clean them up, as you can see. They literally just came in from outside. Um, they came from a company called Highland Miniatures, and the really neat thing about them is that they, um, include both men and women. So you can have dudes and ladies. Um, one annoying thing is that the ladies don't have separate heads like the dudes do. I wish, I wish the ladies had separate heads. Um, just because they have some more customization then. But, yeah, they're pretty dope. It's like a bunch of dudes with beards and weird puffy pants. It's a little bit of sprue still in here to clean up. But we'll, I'll get to that. Far and far from But yeah, they're super cool. There's a lot of poses. There's refilling his weapon. Um shooting, shooting, standing guard, and yeah, they're pretty sweet, um, I do wish I knew what happened to the one lady, but, uh, oh well, we'll figure it out, I guess, um, but yeah, so they're gonna be my silver bayonet crew, um, which is pretty darn sweet, pretty darn sweet, so, The other thing I printed is a gift for my interns. Uh, and these printed a little wonky, unfortunately. But I don't really have time to reprint them before my interns leave. Um, so these are little Among Us guys. They uh, kind of just look like butt plugs. Some of them have little weird leg issues like this one here. And this one here has got the same kind of weird leg issue. But then I got some hats. So you're gonna have some hats. So yeah. Not really like my super jam, but my interns will get a kick out of them. And I'm gonna uh, get them based up and uh, uh, paint it up this weekend so they can have them um, next week. Alrighty, 
So, with that, let's get on to the Battletech stuff. So, this is all the stuff I printed, so let's knock it out and take a look at it. I also have this stuff, which is stuff I printed from the last set of Battletech terrain I made. Um, just in case I want some like little barrels and stuff. So I've got this too, just off to the side there. To give you an idea what we're gonna make. Make a little guy like this. Little diorama for our little Battletech boys, you know? For Alpha Strike. So I've got a, basically a whole city of these now. And I wanna do some like special tiles. So these ones are going to be like uh, supply shipping kind of tiles. So yeah, so let's take a look at them and then we'll, uh, you know, do stuff. And words, Josh, words. We'll make words happen. That's what we'll do. All right, so let's check out what we got. So first off, I've got this thing here right. and then I've got some shipping containers a couple of these printed a little screwed up but I think they're fixable so I haven't thrown them away yet some shipping containers a whole bunch of shipping containers and then I've got a whole bunch of mechs shipping containers tanks and stuff in here too. Um, probably not going to use these for terrain, but I wanted to uh, I wanted to have a couple little tanks and trucks and stuff that would be neat. Um, so I printed them out while I was printing out all the little gubbins. Lots of these individual containers. Ugh. So let's take a look at what we got. Um, got a couple of these guys. So they are... Um, they are just like shipping containers, right? Like big, like chunks of them. Uh, they all come sort of like pre-molded. Some of these printed a little weird. So this one pulled up on this side a little bit. Should it be the end of the world? I should be able to handle it so you don't see it. But just something to consider. Same thing with this one. See, it's a little slanted. It's a little bit slanted. I should, again, be able to handle it so you don't see it. Um, but just something to consider. Uh, so these are all from Lazy Forger, and for whatever reason, my 3D printer really just on these big ones, it really just liked pulling this back side up and like squishing it, and I'm not sure why. On all the smaller ones, they printed perfectly fine. This one, and this one, and this one. What I would probably actually recommend doing if you do want to print these out just print a couple of the small ones and then you can stack them in all different ways and they'll look really nice you know you'll get all kinds of weird then you can get all kinds of weird shapes that aren't just straight lines too it should be pretty cool but mixed in there I've got all of these standalone crates these are just sort of one-offs as well and I've got this thing and we've got the little mechs so these are like shipping container max. I found these on my mini factory. I do not remember the name of the place that made these, but they're really nice. They're super cool. I have a little dust brew in there, but oh well, I guess that's his life now. Yeah, that's right on there. There we go. Nope. Or we'll just take a chunk out of him. It's fine, he's terrain. But yeah, they're pretty cool. Um that set of STLs also came with these little trucks, which are really cool. Came with these little trucks, these little guys. They're all pretty darn sweet. And then I found this STL line, and it's like a little, little, like Humvee kind of thing. It's a little armor transport. So I printed out a bunch of those because I thought it'd be fun to do a uh, an Alpha Strike game where like. Um, Maybe there's like a convoy going through or something 
and like one side out to defend it. Um, that STL with the mechs also came with these, which are like little fuel trucks, which I thought were cool. They're a little less like military y, a little more civilian y. So I figured I'd park them around on the train. But got a couple of trucks to use. We got some containers to use. I printed out a hermit crab. I think technically this is a battle mech, but it really looks like a, a like loading mech. I also printed out this amazing dragon from um, Matt Mason, who is like the battle tech STL god. And we have these old tanks. So. I don't know if I'll use these for Battletech or yet or not. They're a little modern military e, but they're kind of neat. They're kind of cool. We'll see. But if I do, they'll become part of the convoy. They won't be part of today's train. So, with that, let's get to the train. So, I have these things, which is like a rolly thing. And then this is another side. I guess it goes. Hold up. Alright, so we got the two sides here and here. Like that. Nope, nope, like this. Wheels go on the bottom. And then this goes on top. So I guess this side needs to go over here so it lines up with the uh, the walkway there. Ooh, that's a nice fit. Very cool. All right, let's get some glue in there. We'll get this all glued together and then that'll help us decide how we're going to use it. The glue is cherry. I usually buy the big Gorilla Glues, but uh, uh, City Mill is actually out of them today when I stopped by. So. Just gonna stand up like that. Put him right side up while he drives. Just gonna make sure he's driving straight. And this thing, if you've ever been to a dockyard, what it does is it drives around and it has like a crane on it. This piece right here. And this piece uh, like picks up boxes and moves them around and stuff. So like this, this goes in the middle like that, and what it'll do is it'll drive over like a bunch of crates like this, and then it'll just be like, it'll drop the box off, and then it'll be like, go get another one, back and forth, so it can make big box piles. It's kind of like a giant robot, like a grabber arm, like from one of those uh, arcade games. It's pretty cool. And this thing like moves side to side and it's pretty neat. They're one of those like weird things that like if you never have a reason to interact with them, you never will kind of deal. But they're definitely cool. Alright, so it's gonna drive for a little bit. Okay. So I uh, this is my original template for making all that battle tech terrain. Um, sorry, I'm knocking over robot lady. Um, 
This is what I'm going to use to. Did it? Hold on. I don't think it's getting enough good contact in there. Let's try this instead. Putting it on the piece instead of in the hole. There we go. That's much. Ooh, thought that was much better. Man, dude, dude, man. No, I don't even want to say in the fucking hole. Stay put, you asshole. Thank you. Alright, so this is the original template that I made for Battletech. Um, the importance of this is the width. Because uh, the length is just as long as the chipboard that I have that I got off of Amazon, which is right here. Um, the, the width is just as long. So there's nothing special there. Um, but uh, the width is important because it's slightly less than half of one of these pieces of chipboard. Um, so it means that when I cut this, There's going to be like a super tiny little bit in the middle. I don't need to get that up. Um, if I want them to be the same width, which I kind of do. Um, I'm also not above just straight up cutting it in half and having these be slightly bigger tiles. I think that might not be a bad idea either. So this is my chipboard. Um, it's just a little bit under a piece of paper. It's the size that Amazon had. Um, and I'm pretty much just going to cut it down the middle, I think. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll just cut this one down the middle since these pieces are, you know, since some of these crates and stuff are a little bigger. just gonna cut it down the middle um all right so let's see she is just slightly under six inches so if I split the difference there if I split the difference that means this three inch mark here should be our middle line that's what that should mean So, what I'm doing here is trying to line it up with the grid or on my cutting mat. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not super good at this kind of cutting stuff. No, and then that one, that one. Like that. Alright, cool. That should be down the middle. And run it down. There we go. And there is. Oh, shit, look, I actually did it. I actually cut it down the middle. Holy hell. All right. Uh, there we go. So there are two pieces. Um, so now we know how big our like piece of terrain can be. 
Let's see how big we want it to be. So if we put one of these guys, like this guy on here, but you see these guys are pretty goddamn big. Um, they take up a lot of the space. So if I wanted to make like one big one of these, I could do that. Maybe that has like the crane on it, maybe like that. And then maybe make like two smaller ones. Um, might not be a bad idea. Or I can put the crane like this maybe, have one of the little ones under it. You know, have this sit like there. Do that too. Like that maybe. Um, all right, so if we did that, all right, if we had that guy like that, we could have one of these like messed up ones Maybe not that one. One of these messed up ones, like on one of these side pieces here. And we can pile some other ones of like the individual crates around it, and then you'll never see that it's busted. Just sort of covering up, reshaping it, right? Uh, or we could split this in half. Maybe put like half here and a robot there. Maybe, maybe a little like fuel supply truck somewhere right there. Um, you know, or we could park like the fuel supply truck like right there and have the container right there, maybe something like that. Um, Do you think I want one big long one? Uh, and then I think I'm gonna actually split this one here in two. And I think I'll have three pieces for this set. Uh, and I'll have two half pieces and one long piece. Uh, Cause then I can make a couple little like vignettes. Um, so like this guy here would fit on a full half piece, which would be nice. And then I could put this broken guy here like that. And then, let's see, you know, cover up his brokenness, you know, something like that. And then have this, like, big frame piece there as well. You know, like, it's picking pieces off this other one here. Could do something like that, I think would be pretty sweet. Or I could do, like, this guy here, have this be a really big, like, dense piece of terrain. Yeah, I don't know. Not how many are sure, but I think I'm gonna split the little one here, or split this other one into two little ones. Man, why do you not want to glue? Like for real. You got glue on you. Why do you not want to glue? What's wrong with you? The other one's glued. It's uh. Orcs in the way. Always orcs in the way. Um, let's see. I guess I don't have any. Let's see if I had any liquid, more liquid style super glue. Maybe that would help. Glued. Let's see. 
Let's hit this other one just to be safe. Yeah, the inside's here. Safe. And there's a lot of point of contact. I don't know why it's not going. We'll hold it for a second. Sitting right side up will help it. All right, we'll let that glue for a couple minutes. <sighs> there we go. We'll let that sit. Okay, so let's cut this guy in half, and then we'll we'll start fixing stuff down to the bases. Okay, where'd that T square go? T square. You are just shy of eight inches. So if we split the difference, that means that our four inch mark will be our middle. It's right there. Now, is that big enough to hold this guy? It is. Cool, cool, cool. All right, sweet. Okay. We'll go ahead and we will mark you. Okay. There we go. I am not the king of this kind of hobby for sure. Ugh. Though it is fun. Every now and then this kind of like like builder hobby is super neat but in fact measurements and stuff are not my uh, not my forte they're not exact measurements are definitely not what I do for a living <laughs> Excuse a little bit of difference in them. So with the other ones, I rounded off all the corners because um, it will help with. Uh, oh, supposedly it'll help with uh, warping, but I haven't had a single warping issue at all, so I don't think I'm going to bother rounding off the corners here. I think we'll keep them as squares, um, and that should help us fit the square blocks a little bit better. Um, so if I round off the corners, we might not be able to fit them. So, okay. So this one here, we put that guy like that. And then we can put like a pair of trucks, maybe like that. And maybe a couple containers around it. Or just sort of, you know, out of place or something. Something like that, maybe. Maybe put another mech like that. Like maybe this is like where all the uh, the stuff is stored when it's not in use, you know? Or we could have this mech loading this crate, maybe. It'd be kind of cool. Could be like, drunk. Oh, could we actually put it like in his hands? Oh yeah, we can. Fuck yeah, that's cool. Oh, that's perfect. That's so good. That's so good. All right, sweet. All right, so we got that one. That's like what's going to be happening in this one. And this one, we're going to have this guy here. And then I think this is the mech. We're going to have loading containers like that. So he 
is going to be like this. So it's going to be like walking it over. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's do that. Let's get some stuff glued down. We'll start working on this sucker. Hopefully the glue works a little bit better on this than it did on the other guy. So I'm going to put him right here, right in the middle, like that. And we're going to fix some, fix some glue to our mech friend here. Put it there inside his claws so that he can hold this container. There we go. Oops. Let's, since he's actually gonna have a point of contact on the knee, let's put some let's put some glue there too. And now everything in this brother is stuck to my fingers. All right, we're gonna hold that for a minute. Let's zoom this guy in so you guys can see a little better. I'm down here working in itsy bitsy things, and you guys can't really see. There we go. Yeah, how cool is that? A little little mech loader load in a load in a box. That's cool as hell. Right, so he's just gonna be like he's just gonna be like loaded up in there. So we roll on his feet. Like that. Probably put some more containers there, but uh, let's get the other guys down first, and then we'll we'll uh, keep working on it. This one's going to be like the parking lot, kind of. So he's going to be like that. But yeah, these container boxes from Lazy Forger are really nice. Um, again, they have the really nice hollow bottoms, right, which works really well for resin. But my 3D printer did pull up the sides on them a little bit. I'm not sure if that's just because she's a little crooked at the moment. Or if it has something to do with the way the the, um, the like supports and stuff work. Just, you know. I printed two batches of these, but each one was different. So I really can't tell. You know what I mean? Uh, before I print anything else, I probably really should level my printer again, just because this error happened. Um, since this error does potentially mean the printer is unleveled. Plus, I know for a fact I had that that lady with the skull, um, the like silver bayonet lady. I know I had her on the last printer file I did. And if she didn't print, that means she's probably at the bottom of the tank smashed into the FEP. Which means I need to go digging around in there. Since I gotta do that anyway, I might as well level it. <laughs> there we go. Little trucks there. And this one here. All right, so we're going to actually, so the two mechs aren't in the same pose. We're going to cut the arm off this mech. Excuse me. I, uh, uh, don't want to use my god hands for this. That would be a bad idea. I'm going to use these free GW nippers I got. Which are much less delicate. Much better for this kind of thing. All right, there we go. So now we can put the arm down. 
so at least the two max will be in slightly different poses like that. Really, it's like that. And we're going to put it, put it down on its side, like that. This was a bad idea. Yeah, it does not want to sit well. Okay, we're going to. Going to go back to where it was. Or not. Sorry, little mech friend. We might have to reprint you. I might have just broke you. Oh no. You might be dead to us, little mech friend. I'm sorry. All right, we're going to see if you hold there. And if you do, you're just going to stand right here in the parking lot. Join the parking lot, little mech friend. There we go. And then I want to put this guy blocking some sight. So I'm going to put him right there. All right. There we go. Little block of terrain. Now we're going to hit all this with Mod Podge and stuff, um, but after it dries. So we're going to put everything together first. And then we'll we'll mod podge everything. Basically, I'm going to take uh, black paint and mod podge, hit the entire thing, um, like all of the chipboard. I'm not going to hit the the minis and stuff. There's no reason to. Um, I'm going to hit all the chipboard, and then after that dries, I will do another coat on the top of mod podge, and I will sprinkle baking powder on it to make it look like uh, concrete or something like that. So. Should be pretty good. But we gotta get them all loaded up first. Okay, let's sort this guy out with his weird brokenness. So I'm gonna put him in at an angle. Let's take a look at it and see what we have to fix. So, a lot more to fix on that one than this one. So we're gonna need one piece here, like that. Right, we need one piece there, like that. And one like that. side here. It's going to need a lot actually to fix this. Legitimately might take all the... We can probably put one sideways. Alright, we'll probably put one like that. Like that maybe. One, two, three, like that. I think that'll work pretty good. Yeah, that should work pretty good. All right, let's get him glued down. And that'll give me two separate ones to put onto this guy here, which will help. Okay, so getting him glued down. Yeah, if I was to print these again, I would probably just print a whole bunch of like the medium sized ones and then just a shit ton of the individual ones. The individual ones.
That's probably what I would do. There we go. Pushing him down. Like that. Then we can uh, take this guy. And we'll go like that. And then one. And uh, two. And then this will be like this. And this guy will be like that. And that should be perfect. All right, sweet. All right, let's get the little ones glued down. Because they're going to be touching on this side. I'll put some glue on that side in case they touch. Nope. I might, honestly, I might just do that. Yeah, we'll just do that. That way, I'll have one extra free for the other piece of terrain. Yeah, just like that. And then we'll go like that. Yeah, that'll save me a little bit extra. Um, It'll save me one extra container for the other piece of terrain. And honestly, since these, um, since this train sort of like pushed up on itself, uh, the containers are slightly different heights. And it'll be really obvious if I try to stack them with this. Um, but if I put them in like a different orientation, it should be less obvious. So, fingers crossed anyway. Fingers crossed. There we go. Alright. Okay, cool. Well, that's that piece repaired. Oh. And then we've got this. It's going to go like that. This guy in the middle. And then... And it should be good, just like that. All right. Just gonna glue this guy down next. These like middle-sized ones are really, really nice. Just gonna go down the middle like that. This guy, put that piece on last. He's gonna be like that. Unfortunately, he's not gonna have a ton of contact. He's still gonna have some. down for a minute just because there's not a ton of contact there there all right this guy can go on the right side or the left side really it's this thing like zooms left and right um, Question of where does it look better? If I put it on the outside, it looks cooler, like that. Really, I don't need to. I don't need to glue this down. It's not necessary, but it will. Um, 
this is kind of a delicate piece, but I don't want it to like bounce around and get broken, you know. So I am going to glue it down, even though you absolutely don't have to. But it's like, it's like all little tiny wires holding this crate, so. Yep, 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 connects is actually different than what I originally put glue on so should be worked out now all right so we got three little containers for this other one here so what I was thinking about doing is maybe something like this and then like that so I want to fill up the space a little you know you can also check the other box see what's in there what do I got here? I got some like fence things. Be kind of cool. A little fence piece might be neat. Um, got some barrel bits. We'll pull those out. We'll use those. Little tire bits. We'll use those. Uh, got a little house. I don't want a little house. It's a fucked up fence piece. More fence pieces. I don't see the fence pieces being super useful. Houses got this. It's kind of cool. It's like a little watchtower. We could do that. Uh, yeah. Put a little radio on top of it like that. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Have like a little watchtower here in the corner. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. We'll do that. All right. Let's put these containers down first. To be honest, I legitimately might just print off a whole bunch more of these little containers and stick them all around. So they're really cool. <laughs> they're, they're super cool. That's awesome. And we'll put the watchtower here in the corner. Like that. And we'll put the little radio tower on top of it. That'll be really sweet. We got like a whole little dockyard. For our battle mechs to stomp around. Which was awesome. Okay. And we'll throw this. Up top. Try not to glue it to our fingers. There we go. 
Let's see, I've got a little, little thing of tires here. Um, yeah, I've got the big thing of tires here. Let's put the let's put one of the sets of tires over here. We'll put it like on the back here. We'll put the big one on the back. Like that. go. There's one in the back there. Put that keep nice and glued down. And this little one, I don't know, we'll just stick in the corner here or something. If you don't want the chipboard to eat so much glue, because the chipboard eats a lot of glue, um, Hit it with Mod Podge first, and it really, really helps with that. And it won't just like suck glue up like it's going out of style. But yeah, there we go. Really cool little little dockyard for Battletech. So this is a Centurion. Let's give you an idea, so they'll be able to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, they'll be able to stand and get into the cover a little bit, and they'll be able to get pretty hefty cover um, like if you were playing classic with true line of sight like you would only be able to hit his head if he was there right that would definitely give you like super cover bonuses if you're playing alpha strike so it's pretty dope oh man I got another one still sweet okay we'll put it on this guy and then we got this guy and Yeah, maybe I'll just do that to to um, add a little more width there. I think I legitimately might print out a bunch more of these. Just print out like a whole sheet of these little ones and put them around. That would be pretty cool. We got our little robot carrying the carrying the thing. Got a little watchtower. So they can watch and be like, you put that container in the wrong spot or whatever, you know. Pretty cool. Then we got this one, which is like a storage yard for vehicles and stuff. That's pretty sweet. And the nice thing about these is when I put this on the table, now I'm gonna put these around to make other shapes and stuff. You know, to make alleyways for them to go through and, you know, different ways to block cover and stuff. Which would be pretty cool. You know, like if you got that, right, you can get some pretty sweet cover in there. And then it gives a nice little, like, themed portion to the board, which is pretty cool. So we'll have all those, and then we'll have my city bits all around it. You know, it's like a whole little dockyard in the city. Which is pretty darn cool. Alright. Sweet. Well, I've apparently been streaming this for an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it. Um, I'm not super sure where I'm going to put these yet. So I'm just going to put them over here, I guess. But uh, thank you for watching me make some cool battle tech terrain for Alpha Strike. Or I guess you could use in Classic, but primarily for Alpha Strike. Um, if you enjoyed this, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be painting my silver bayonet guys tomorrow. Because I'm about to get them all paint set up on their uh, bases and stuff. And they will get primed tonight. And uh, yeah, be ready for painting tomorrow. It'll be awesome. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it there. Uh, thank you for watching. Yeah, hopefully this was fun. And uh, 